Welcome to the HAL Video Manual. This package serves as an introduction to the system with practical examples of the system's many varied functions. The program's content is modular in structure, allowing specific areas of interest to be easily accessed. After viewing the tape and its accompanying worked examples, the designer should be highly proficient in applying traditional artistic skills to digital video, allowing total freedom in the generation of creative images. HAL comprises of an integrated control station connected to the HAL mainframe and disc pack, which may often be located in a different area to the control station. To begin using HAL, both the control station, mainframe and disc pack must be switched on. Both the mainframe and disc pack have a rocker switch to the rear. Both need to be switched on, the disc pack first. If they need to be switched off, Wait for 30 seconds before switching them back on again to avoid damaging the discs. When switched on, the system displays a dark screen for about two minutes while the discs run up to speed and the machine is set up. The control station comprises of a monitor, digitizing tablet and pen, a keyboard and a hand unit. Only the monitor and tablet need to be switched on. The switch for the tablet is located to the rear on the right hand side. The grip is a small hand unit which provides additional control over some of the system's functions. It comprises of four control buttons, a multi-directional thumb switch and a trigger switch. The keyboard supplied with the system is used mainly for text or numeric entry. It can also be used to control certain functions such as macros. The spacebar acts as a toggle switch for switching on a statistics bar at the base of the drawing area of the screen. The keyboard can also be used to reboot the system if a problem occurs. This is done by holding down the Cell, Alt and Del keys. The pen is used to access all of the system's functions via the on-screen menu display. It is held in the same way as a conventional pen. The pen's nib is pressure sensitive, allowing the user to indicate points on the screen by moving the cursor to the specific position on the tablet and gently pressing the pen down. The tablet is active in an A4 area in its centre, which corresponds to the area of the screen. For the system to know the position of the pen, it must be held in close proximity to the tablet, within 4mm, close but not necessarily touching. A cursor in the form of a cross, which is normally yellow, will then appear on the screen. The cursor moves about the screen as the pen moves around the tablet, each position on the tablet corresponding to a position for the cursor on the screen. When first learning to operate the system, begin by placing the pen in the centre of the tablet and move it slowly around the picture area to become accustomed to the size and extent of this working area. The system's menu is obtained or removed by swiping the pen horizontally or vertically off the tablet, remembering not to press down while doing so. A natural smooth motion is the easiest way of accomplishing these moves. Swiping up or down will reveal the colour palette, either at the top or the bottom of the screen. With the palette on the screen, swiping left or right replaces it with the menu. Menu is the term given to a displayed list of functions. There are a number of different menus in the system, covering clearly defined areas of operation. The first column on the left is the listing of main menu functions. These menu boxes begin with a capital letter and always remain available for selection. Pressing on one of these main menu boxes displays its submenu to the right. To the right of the submenu boxes is the stencil menu and below that, the menu boxes that wipe the screen and allow grids to be used. These menus remain visible and usable when all the major menu functions except library. At the extreme right of the display is the table menu, which allows pictures to be saved and recalled to a working buffer. The current main menu is indicated by the appropriate box in the extreme left-hand column being illuminated in pink. To change menus, tap on the required box by moving the pen so that the position of the cursor on screen is moved over the required menu item 
and then press down. The menu boxes will display various different colours indicating the status of the menu functions. Grey indicates that the function is not currently selected but is available. Pink indicates the functions that are currently selected. Pressing pink boxes in most circumstances disables the function. Green boxes indicate that the box value or title can be entered by the user. Values can be changed using the increase and decrease boxes by entering a value in the keypad or by sliding the pen up and down or left and right. Blue boxes give information. By pressing this blue HAL information box, the current system software version is shown. Blue boxes can sometimes be scrolling lists, allowing hidden lists to be accessed. Orange boxes indicate that an operation has been aborted for the indicated reason. A heavy pen pressure will remove these boxes. Yellow boxes appear when a macro has been replayed and gives the status of the macro's operation. The functions of all the various boxes are described in detail in the menu reference manual. Swiping up or down reveals the colour and mixing palette, which is used to select and mix colours for painting directly to an image. The system always starts up with black as the selected pen colour, indicated in the colour box to the right of the main menu. From here, a brush type can be selected, from paint, airbrush, chalk or custom. Swipe down to reveal the full screen. Placing the pen in the centre of the tablet and, exerting normal pressure, draw the pen across the tablet. This will draw a line. To change brush thickness or colour, swipe down to the palette. On the left are 42 colour pots containing or ready to accept colours. This is the working palette. The large central blank box is the mixing area and the column of six boxes to the right represents brush widths, ranging from the very fine at the top to broad at the bottom. Pressing the pen on one of the preset boxes sets the brush size to that indicated in the relevant box. On the far right is a box which enables a scalable brush. Pressing on the brush size inside the box and sliding the pen makes the brush size increase or decrease, depending on the direction of the pen. To the left of this is a box containing the current paint colour. To select a new colour, tap lightly on one of the colour pots on the left of the palette. Numeric selection of colour is available from the palette and can be specified in the colour space box as RGB, red, green and blue, YUV, luminance and colour difference values, or HSL, hue, saturation and luminance. A colour may be generated by entering values into the colour space boxes. The rectangular vertical box to the right of the palette shows the colour currently defined by these values. If the colour space box turns orange, an illegal colour has been created. Illegal colours must not be broadcast and should not be used. To mix two colours together, first select a large brush size and a colour. Colour a section of the mixing area and selecting the second colour to be mixed, brush lightly over the first colour. Tapping down on the mixed colour will select the new colour. This new colour can now be placed in the colour pots on the left by pressing down for a second on any one of them. A quick press will not deposit the colour but merely pick up the colour already loaded in that box. The mixing area can be cleared by flooding it with a solid colour by pressing down in the current colour box. It is not possible to paint while the palette is displayed. Pressing on the screen will merely pick up a colour from the current picture. Swiping up or down removes the palette, allowing the new brush size and colour to be used on screen. Tapping on the table box enters the table, which is a viewable working store of the pictures, stencils or cutouts currently being used. The screen will display miniature pictures of these items. There are three main areas to the table, two of which are always constant, the library and tray positions, 
which have a subtitle in the bottom left-hand corner of the picture miniature. When pictures, cutouts or stencils are fetched from the system's main library to the table, they will always be placed in the library position. This is helpful in keeping the table tidy and organised. If you remove the fetch pictures from the library position, they will lose their subtitle and become part of the main table working area. Placing any picture back in the library position will not allow that picture to reacquire the previous library fetch status. If more than one picture has been fetched from the library, they will be displayed in a stack. The stack can be scrolled through by dragging the orange line to the left and right under the stack. The stack can be opened up by tapping on the picture miniature. The pictures will then be displayed in a connected chain. To move the chain to another position in the working area, press on any picture and, maintaining pressure, initially drag the chain left or right before moving vertically to the desired position. A picture can be removed from the chain by pressing and dragging the picture vertically. A picture can be added to the chain by dragging it into a position on the chain. Pictures can be loaded from a folded or unfolded stack to the HAL main working area. Tapping on any picture in the chain will fold the chain back into a stack. To load a picture, select Load, Pick and the picture to be loaded. This automatically exits the table and displays the picture full frame. A picture can be saved into a temporary store labelled 1 by pressing Save, Pick, 1. Loading another picture from the table will replace the previously displayed full frame picture. This picture can be saved into the other temporary store labelled 2 by pressing Save, Pick, 2. To demonstrate, wipe the screen. Then, pressing and holding on either of the temporary store boxes temporarily displays the contents of that store. As work progresses on an image, it is very important to save your work at regular stages. The best method of doing this is by using the tray function. Initially, the tray is empty, indicated by the dark grey colour of the tray box. When saving a picture to the tray, the menu box changes to light grey, indicating that the tray contains a picture or number of pictures. The difference between the tray and the two temporary stores is that work can be continually saved without overwriting the previous contents of the store, building up a stack. Entering the table, the picture saved to the tray will always appear in the second constant area of the table, the tray position, with the subtitle tray in the bottom left of the picture miniature. The contents of the tray stack can be viewed in the same way as before. The contents of the tray can be removed from the tray position to the table working area, but unlike the library pictures, they can be returned to the tray position where they snap into place. It is possible to add individual images or entire stacks to the tray's contents. To load a picture from the tray, select the picture from the tray stack and press Load Pick Tray. It is possible to load the current picture from the tray from within the table or from the main menu. To delete any items from the table, drag them down below the menu. If a mistake has been made, pressing undo will undo the last operation. Next, we will look at some drawing and painting tools of the system. In this picture of a girl next to a fence, the fence has an unwanted black line down its centre, which can be removed with the use of the copy brush. The copy brush works by taking one area of the picture and duplicating it to another. Select Copy, and pressing down and maintaining pressure on the point to copy from, drag out a yellow box, the opposite corner of which defines the area to be copied to. By keeping the pen in proximity, it is now possible to make an identical copy of one area to another part of the screen. To redefine the copy brush, lift the pen out of proximity and redraw the yellow box for the required copy. To get a final control when drawing on an image, the zoom function allows a close-up of the image to be displayed. The arrows control the magnification of the zoom, while dragging the grey box allows different areas of the screen to be displayed, as does dragging on the screen area.
the retouch picture should then be saved to the tray. The picture can be titled in the table by pressing title, allowing a title to be entered via the on-screen keypad or the keyboard. When a title has been entered, pressing on the picture miniature will assign the new title to that picture. Note that when an item on the table has been titled, it will automatically be saved in the system's main library. Picture titling and handling will be detailed further in the picture management topic. There are many drawing tools in the system, including four different types of lines. Straight unconnected lines, connected lines, radial allows many lines to be drawn out from a single point, parallel lines make all the lines drawn parallel to the first line drawn. The H and V lines box restricts the lines drawn to the horizontal and vertical axes only. Rectangles can be hollow, filled in, or solid with square corners. Pressing the centred box allows the rectangles to be drawn from the centre as opposed to from the corners. Pressing the square box restricts the rectangles to have sides of equal length, again drawn from the centre. Rectangles can also be graduated from one colour to another. Enter a colour into the colour pot, in this case cyan. Tapping on the smaller colour pot swaps the colour pots, allowing a second colour, in this case yellow, to be entered. Selecting the arrow boxes allows the gradient to blend from one of the colours to the other, either horizontally or vertically. Selecting Edit enables the rectangle to be drawn in preview mode. That means it is uncommitted to the background picture until stick is pressed. This allows the shape to be moved by pressing on the shape, maintaining pressure and dragging to a new position. The dimensions of the rectangle can also be changed by bringing the cursor to a side or corner and pressing and dragging the shape. Pressing values allows these functions to be controlled numerically. The values can either be percentages or pixel scaling. When the desired shape has been finalised, pressing stick will commit it to the background. The edit and value functions perform in the same way for circles, which can either be hollow or filled. The x and y coordinates and the radius of the circle can also be changed. Circles can be drawn out from the centre, or by selecting tangential from the edge. Ellipses operate in a similar way to circles, except that they have a second radius and a value for the angle of the ellipse. Another useful feature used to draw more accurately is the grid function. Select Def Grid from the graphics menu. The colour of the grid can be chosen by depositing a colour in the colour pot. The number of horizontal and vertical lines on the grid are entered in the H and V numeric boxes. To demonstrate, a three-stripe flag can be constructed by entering two for the horizontal and three for the vertical, then selecting Use Grid. Different parts of the grid can be constrained. Horizontal, vertical, left, right, top and bottom. Select a rectangle and draw it out to the right. When it reaches the extent of the grid, the cursor will snap to the constrained edge. Repeat for the other colours. Grids can be saved in the system's main library, described in the picture management topic. The curve function allows irregular shapes to be drawn, either closed or open. Any shape drawn with curves is a preview until committed to the background with stick. This means that the curve can be edited using various tools. Selecting tangent allows the individual nodes on the curve to be adjusted. Nodes on the curve can be converted to straight lines by selecting straight and then a node.
round changes a straight line to a curved at the selected node. The size of the shape can be changed by selecting size and then dragging the pen left or right. If a node is moved between two others, you can see that the whole shape is affected. If the adjacent nodes are fixed by selecting lock, then tapping on the node, and then lock and tapping on the other node, the centre node can then be moved affecting only the section of the curve between the two locked nodes. To unlock a node, select round or straight and then the node to be unlocked. New nodes can be inserted anywhere on the shape by selecting insert and then tapping down in the desired position on the curve. Deselecting open closes the shape which can be filled with the current colour by selecting filled. When the desired shape has been completed and positioned it can be committed to the background by pressing stick. To create another shape select delete all to reset the curve parameters to allow a new shape to be constructed. Shapes can also be drawn freehand in the graphics menu without having to access the painting menu by using the paint and function. Press paint and and draw a closed shape on the screen. Tapping down in the centre of the shape will flood fill it with the current colour. The fill function can be used to flood fill existing shapes. In this example the drawing of a gymnast can be loaded and the fill function used to selectively colour in areas on the picture. One of the most useful painting tools is Restore, which allows one picture to be revealed through another. To start with, load the two pictures into the temporary stores 1 and 2. This picture, although a still frame, has a flicker in it. This is because a frame is made up of two fields, which when played out in a moving clip, displays a smooth motion. This example shows two moving balls. One has been processed with two fields in each frame, the other with a single image for each frame, like film footage. The field processed ball moves with a smooth motion, while the frame processed ball flickers. When the balls are stopped, the two fields are visible in the field based ball, while the frame based ball shows a perfectly still frame. Field and frame movement is dealt in more detail in the paste up and keyframes topic. To remove one of the fields from a still frame such as this, select effects, then field, and one or two and either do pen or do all. When the desired effect is achieved, save the result in the temporary store too. Pressing on the restore box in the painting menu allows the contents of the stores to be viewed. The selected picture, either one, two or tray, will become the background, which can be revealed through the foreground, which is currently displayed full screen. By drawing on the screen with a chosen brush, in this case a medium sized airbrush, the background can be revealed. To reverse the restore process, change the background to be restored to the foreground, in this case change from 2 to 1, then continue painting. And here is the final result. In this section, I'm going to be looking at stencils and cutouts. Okay, the section we're going to be looking at today is stencils. 
Now stencils in its basic form is exactly the same process of masking out areas as the same as conventional airbrushing. So basically all you're simply doing is protecting a specific area. Okay, so if we go in and just show you how we can start to use or make these stencils within the system. First of all we need to be in the painting menu and then all these little menus to the right hand of the screen here are the um, particular ones we need to use to create a stencil. Okay, so first of all what I'm going to do is just wipe the screen to a black and then select draw. Now we can either plus or minus and this is very obviously to either create the stencil is plus and to minus takes this away. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go to plus and get, select an airbrush and just make a big circle like so. And as exactly as I explained before, we're just protecting this part of the screen. So if I use this stencil, then if you go down and pick up any colour, for instance maybe a yellow, you're going to see there that we're masking off or protecting that circle. Okay, now again if I wipe this screen and select the stencil, by this time we're going to reverse it and obviously we're going to do the complete opposite. So if we use this stencil, we're only protecting the areas around or outside the circle. So anywhere I press around the circle, like so, is protected by the stencil. Now however difficult or complex your stencils become, the basic logic behind them is exactly this. You're just protecting certain areas. Okay, so let's go and look on my table. We have an image here of the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Now what I'm going to do is uh, to utilise the stencils to create a number of different um, changes to this image. So we're going to completely try and transform this particular picture. Okay, now the first thing that I want to try and create, or to create, is to make a cutout of this section of the building so that we can then reposition this anywhere on the screen. So first of all what I could do is maybe just if I select a paintbrush with the draw stencil selected, just draw around the image and then this will be able to cut it out. But obviously this is not particularly very accurate, so what I'm going to do is go into effects and select the Kia. Now what this enables me to do is to create an instant stencil. Now what it does, it looks at the chrominance and luminance values of the picture, like so, to create your stencil. So we're just looking at the blues on this screen just by using the pen and tablet to keep pressing on those particular areas. Okay, and also just maybe add some softness as well just to uh, bring those edges closer together. Now I'm going to select do all and then go back into the painting and draw because what I'm going to do is just take some of this away. There's just those little, little red bits there. I can also select Hycon which shows me the black areas that I need to um, start to um, get rid of. Like so. So let's just drop back down. Okay, so what I need to do now is select uh, another paintbrush and now very accurately draw around the rest of this building. Like so. Now I could go into the graphics menu and select fill, which will fill obviously these parts around. And also to get rid of this tree, I'm just going to select a solid rectangle, still in the draw stencil mode, to mask off that area as well. So now you can see that I have complete control over just this selected area. So if I go into paste up and select cut 
picture, but also with its stencil. And now just using the crosshairs to uh, cut this particular part of the image away. Okay, so now you see that that is completely on the end of my pen. I can move this to any position I desire on the screen. I can maybe rotate, reposition, resize within the paste up 3D menu. Okay, now we can have up to 99 layers or cutouts within um, the 3D paste up or within the paste up menu. And we can also start to animate and um, keyframe these cutouts as well. But that is, that's a section that we're going to be looking at in a lot more detail further on in a different topic. Right then, so let's get back to this. Now if we just go back to the original image like so, what I want to do now is just simply copy brush this part of the building away so we can reposition the new one. Now, I have one already created on the table like so just by using a copy brush and now if we go in to the paste up menu I can just reposition or re-spin this particular cutout. So there we go. Maybe just size this down very slightly as well. Right then, so I'm going to stick this down and save this into my temporary buffer which is classed as the tray. Okay, so let's go back into the painting menu and this time we're just going to try and copy this part of the building so we can then reposition it exactly next to it. So there's a number of ways that we, would do, we could do this. First of all, I could just simply try and very accurately to draw around it so I can cut it out. Or, like before, we can go into the Kia. Now the Kia remembers the last values that you've used, so if I just select Do All. And then all I need to do now is just draw around the bottom. like so. So now if I go back into the paste up menu, unlike before, select cut, picture and stencil. And now this is another cutout. You can see there that we have two cutouts within this menu. I could also change the priority of this if I wanted to, to make this go behind, like so. But we're just going to reposition this like so, and this is now straight. So again, let's just stick this down and save this again into our tray. Because what I want to do now is again to create another stencil to really change the whole of the, the whole, whole of the sky, basically. So we're going to give it a new sky. So again, let's go into effects, select the key, do all. But this time, what we want to do is uh, also get rid of this tree, this section of the image. So like before, just selecting a rectangle, like so. So now, if I view my stencil in the painting menu, what I can do is reverse this. So there we're just um, protecting um, the building and not the sky. So now if we go to Restore, use our stencil, I'm going to restore back through, you can see this in this small buffer there, a different sky. Like so. Just brushing that back through. And you notice if I touch on any of the areas where the stencil is activated, I cannot restore back through. So just these selected areas. like so. So we have this nighttime feel to the image now with this different sky, but what we need to do is colour correct just the foreground or just this building so it looks as if it's nighttime. So what we can do is again use this stencil but reversing it the opposite way. So if we go in to the colour corrector, what I can then do is just simply bring down the contrast 
of just the foreground. And there you could have a complete silhouette if you wanted to. Or we're just going to bring this up a little bit if it's just becoming the evening. OK, and selecting Do All, and also saving this picture to my tray. Right, now if I go back to my table, we've got one that we've uh, finished off earlier. Just there. Like so. And there you can see that we've just, I've just created a very small um, light on this window. So they're creating or utilising the stencils. We can really transform um, this image. Right then. Now what we're going to do is go a little bit further and take these into the paste up menu but, but animate these as well. So let's go into the paste up and get rid of everything that we had in there. And just bring in these two cutouts that are saved on my table. And also just the original background, like so. So there we have it. Leaning Tower of Pisa again. Let's just uh, reposition this. And also the cutout that we had before as well. So again, I'm just going to, with this image here, just spin this slightly. So, and also again size this down. But what I'm going to do is try and animate this part of the building as if it's coming up from the ground. Now, obviously, it doesn't look particularly realistic at the moment. So, what I need to do again is create another stencil. So, let's go back in to the painting and just brush a stencil along the bottom like so. Now instantly you'll see if I use that and go back into the paste up menu the stencil is protecting that part of the image so it looks like it's actually going behind or into the ground. Okay so let's start off this image around about there and then over just two seconds very simply I'm just going to animate or keyframe a movement like so. There you can see it. Very simple move. And also if I just copy this as well and bring this over to the right hand side of the image and also size it down. What we're going to try and do now is make it look as if this is actually in the background and again to create a very simple stencil and into the painting and we're just going to protect this area here so now you can see that this new part of the building is actually looking as if it's going behind. OK, so the other one's going up, so this one's going to come down over 50 frames. Just simply bring this down. And straight away you can see that those two moves have made. And just last but not least, we're just going to bring the opacity up over two seconds as well on this last cutout like so, and also I can just process this. Now there you can see just very free, very simple moves that we've been able to uh, manipulate our free cutouts um, within the paste up menu. We've made a cutout by making a stencil and then we've been able to animate these. But obviously, as I said before, we're going to be looking at this in a lot more detail, by actually animating moving image and text and cutouts all within paste up 3D. So this is just a brief look at how we can utilise these cutouts within How. In this topic, I will be showing you the library and the full page menu. Initially, we're going to have a look at the library. I need to find some images for the piece of work that I'm currently working on. So I'm going to go to my library and do an open search. This means I start with a clean file card and just press N to initialise the search. I can go and view those items by the title. 
or browse mode. And I can go down one or up, down a page, up a page, or go to the beginning of the disc or the end of the disc. If I go to Info, I can look at my file cards in a, a condensed view, or I could go and have a look at the file card. And we can see an array of information that's available to us here. In the name search field, we can fit up to 30 letters. Type allows us to go in and view any item within the library. We can see which disk that we're working on. It's the system disk at the moment. And the owner is another user-definable search field. So this, for instance, is the designer maybe working on this piece. And the date's always saved when saving any item into the library. So a very useful point uh, of search if nothing's entered in the rest of those search fields. So categories can be used as a way of grouping a whole number of items. Also we've got description here and that's used to save information pertaining each individual item. That might be copyright, it might be where the clip has been shot, um, etc. We can also use keep, lose and recall to find items. So here I'm going to find pubs and I'm going to choose to lose from my search brewery. And you'll notice that I'm just putting in part of the word and that's enough to exclude that from my search. And I can choose to recall any stage of that process. I can also go and find two names. So I'm going to find pubs and Beatles here using the ampersand. This enables me to search two names at once. And we can see now I've put, brought up two names and I can then still go in and lose whatever items I want to. I can also choose to go and find things by date. Let's go and clear out the name there go to date and I can assign dates from and to so 1998 and then the 19th 1998 then just press N to initialize the search or I could just search for today's date If I go back to my open search, we can see here we've got display. Now display allows us to go and customise our search even further. For instance here we can go in and apply a detail to our titles. This is, allows us to see the title as well as the type of image that it is or the type of item, the date that it was saved, the owner and the amount of frames that uh, are used within the clip or reel. The television standard, whether that's NTSC or PAL, that's 525 or 625. So these can also be viewed in the browse mode. Also, we're able to go and order um, everything alphabetically. If I tap on name here, you can see that everything's ordered and I can see that in reverse as well. Clear will go and default that to the unsorted mode. If we go back into display again, I can customise my search even further. So for instance here, um, I want to swap the date and make it appear at the end um, of the page. So I'm just going to tap down on it and drag my cursor across and I can also choose to um, view um, certain aspects of that date so I'm going to just take away the time there and I can move across categories so that I can see the rest of name 
And then I can choose to say order everything by date or by duration or even by categories. So a lot of extra functions there helping us find the relevant information. The full page menu allows us to access even more tools and setups. I will cover areas that the designer would use on a day-to-day -day basis. A more detailed description of the other functions can be found in the menu reference manual. From the top here you can see the system software that's currently running. Also we can see that we're currently running in PAL. The serial number is unique to this particular machine. Also we've got the current uh, date today and the time. We can see that we're, we've got the local and the shared disks that are currently um, enabled or we can disenable them. And we've also got net shared disks. These are sh other people's shared disks. So this is the edit boxes shared disk. And any other shared disk that we might be connected to will be listed below here. And we've also got access to our exchangeable disk. We can see how, much, how many frames we've got left um, in our local disk store here. We got up to 2,625 megabytes free. And the darker area here within the box uh, indicates the frames that have already been used. Preferences enables us to customise additional tools to meet the designer's needs. Here, for instance, we've got cursor on, which enables us to view the cursor whilst working. Cursor off enables us to record the output without the cursor. Confirm on allows for greater operational accuracy. Also, menu top defaults the menu to the top of the screen. Stripey string allows me to view the progression of a DVE, each of these stripes representing one frame. More details can be found in the paste up and keyframes topic. Sixteen by nine changes the ratio of my images. Here, for instance, if I go to graphics and stick down this circle and then turn on sixteen by nine, we can see the change in the ratio. The safe area again is user definable and it's very useful uh, for broadcast. Normally uh, the text is viewed on 15%. If we go and have a look at our graphic here we can see that the text is slightly out of this safe area. Let's bring it back in again and just save that. We've also got colour bars. This enables us to calibrate the machine and it's useful to bring those in to the desk, just record them and play them out to tape um, so that other systems can be calibrated to these colour bars. System allows us to both control the system software and hardware for instance, we can restart the whole system by pressing confirm there or clean up and clean up allows us to get rid of any corruption say on the menus or within clips. Disk allows us to initialise not just the system disk but the magneto optical. 
So here, for instance, we're initializing this disk. State the side of the disk that you're on and give it a name. Check that it's on address 3, otherwise you'll initialize the system disk and then just press confirm. So I've used the title A because I wanted to state which side of the disk I'm working on. This helps me to organize my work and you can see that that exchangeable is now ready to work with so I can copy images uh, or other information over to uh, that exchangeable disk. Reindex is used if there are problems with the system's filing. This is often indicated by a slowing down of the system. By double tapping on any of these central columns allows me into a sub-menu. Here we can go and grab images live or we can go and create our own palettes. And we've got field dominance over here. This selects the system's dominant field. If this is set incorrectly, you'll see a slight strobing effect when playing out video. Let's have a look at create palette. So first of all, I'm going to bring down uh, an image from my table here. And literally, create palette allows me to bring in any part of my image into my palette. I'm going to now use that palette to colour correct my image. And then create a colour correction. Further information about colour correction will be made later on in the tape. Save that to the table. Also within um, Create Palette we've got Restore Palette. If we go and have a look at my palette at the moment you can see that I've inserted some colours here where normally they would be grey. To get the default palette back, just press Restore Palette. So now we have the default palette. And just to clear out off uh, what may have been inserted in here, just keep pressing down on uh, the larger box here. We've also got uh, a live video feed. At the moment it's an analog, but we can also choose a digital input. This is used in addition to the VTR input within the clips menu and is used by many stations as a live feed from the rostrum camera. As we are here, we can go and choose to freeze frames or simply save as we go. Each time I save a frame, it's incremented into the library. Like so. I can now go and search for those items in the library. And browse them and I'm just going to fetch one of those in and just clean it up. Size it up. and go and colour correct it. I'm now going to uh, save that item to the table. 
and give it a name. Now if we go back to search for that in the library again, we can see our new one. Um, I'm going to sort this by name as well. Um, and we can also see, if I go to the detail on the display, that this has been saved at a later date. Therefore, we can still go in and uh, find our latest material. In fact, we could go and sort by date as well if we wanted to, bringing the current uh, work to the forefront there. Going back to the table, we can see here they've got quite a few items that need to be organised. So just by lassoing them, by tapping down and then lifting the pen just very slightly off the tablet and then pressing down again, and keep the pen pressed down enables us to concertina uh, these items. If we put them over themselves, we then get a stack. So if I wanted each of these items to be saved into the library, what I can do is go to Title and just detitle all of these. And I'm going to use the button on the grip to keep this menu open, the button 2. I'm just going to tap on each one of these to detitle it. And then title them pubs. And it will automatically increment those titles and save them to the library. There we go. We're also able to colour code items as well. So going into colour here, just select colour, uh, a new colour from my palette. And then um, just tap on an item to colour code it. Or what I can do is select a group in that fashion. We've also got the elements for a piece that I've been working on and perhaps I want to just view them all full page. What I can do is just story the stack and I can tap down on the tablet to go through this stack or I could clip with the grip going forwards and backwards. Let's just load the last one to the desk. So I'm going to load the picture up full frame and simply record a single frame onto the desk there. So throughout the topic we've seen how we can grab images live, go and save them into the library and then we're able to use our tools to go and search the relevant items again.